Hey, everybody. Ryan Whedon here, CEO and founder of Masters of Balayage. I am excited to join you today for our coaching session. We do this every single month. And if you're an active member and you're able to sign up for the coaching program, then you get access to education that will help you. Uh, not only sometimes we'll, do, we'll have guests that will talk about balayage. Sometimes I'll talk about balayage. Sometimes, like today, we're going to be talking about how to uh, build, grow, and scale a business so that we can make our uh, achieve our lifestyle goals, whatever we're trying to, to do in our life, to have do it with more direction, more focus, and more clarity so that we can get to where we want to get faster, so we can shortcut our path to success. So I see here from the chat, we've, as always, which is so awesome, have people from all over the place. We've got New Mexico, Maryland. I actually uh, was used to live in Maryland a long time ago in Potomac, Maryland. Um, I, I have a near and dear to my heart. Montana, uh, Alberta, Canada, or Quebec. Uh, let's see, Quebec, uh, Edmonton. Oh, it's cloudy. In, I'm like, cloudy Maryland. Where's cloudy in Maryland? Oh, I forgot that. The, it, uh, I'm talking about the weather now. Um, Montana, this is amazing. Oklahoma. San Diego, all right, local, <laughs> Michigan, uh, Chicago, and uh, yeah, it's, the weather is kind of different all over the place here in San Diego. It's, um, it's, it's pretty warm compared to a lot of places, but you know, the way we look at it, it's freezing. My hands are like frigid. I, I, my, my skin has really like thinned up since I've been here, and a, a cold day is, you know, 50 50s you know we're we're wearing jackets when it's like 65 degrees outside so just you know some of you are like hey it's springtime when it's 65 degrees believe me i understand that because having lived and grown up out on the east coast which i never really ever got used to that the cold i would just dress more warmly and appropriately i understand like you know it's uh, when it comes to march and you have those those days where it's warming up from freezing to to 50 degrees you're like oh my gosh let's throw the shorts on. So let's get outside and capture some sun. Uh, so I totally get it. Uh, but today, what we're going to be talking about are the five levels of success. What I think, in my experience, are the five levels of success. What has helped uh, to, to us, me and my personal experience, and this is why you, you listen to people like me and, and other thought leaders in other industries and even in our industry, is because we've achieved goals in a certain way. And we, what we're able to do is take what we've learned, share it with you, take what you can from that, and hopefully something will click, something you'll, you'll, you'll learn a framework, which I've learned from tons of incredible people uh, over the years. And my goal is that you learn from me and, and maybe from other educators. And, and then one day, I want to be one of the, the people that helps it all click for you so that you realize, oh, this is what I need to change, or this is the framework, the path that's going to really shortcut my my, my success. And of course, success is very different. It's a word that's thrown around a lot, but success means something very different to everybody, right? Success doesn't necessarily mean mansions and yachts, like people flash around on Instagram, like that's a vision of success. But I think success to a lot of us has to do with having more freedom, having more time and more purpose and vision in our life. In the chat, that's the best way I can communicate with you. I want to hear what, what some of your, your thoughts are on what does success mean to you? Just throw it in a sentence. I want to share it if I can, because I know it means something very different to everybody. And there's no right or wrong answer to that. That's what you feel individually. I think as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as hairstylists, even if you don't really know where your future is going to go or you're leaving the door wide open to possibility, which I think we always should, I would love to hear what success means to you, what your idea of success would be. Like if you had it in your life, you could look in the mirror and say, I did it. You know, I am successful. A lot of us have that, that, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, what do you call it? When the, 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 you, you're not really there yet. You know, um, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for nothing. Yeah, <laughs> that was Amanda. She looks over at me like, what? I'm not here. Yeah, imposter syndrome. A lot of us do that. A lot of us have that. Even, even for, for I've had it recently too in, in different roles because every time we step out of our comfort zone 
and do something different or we attach a new role, we, we, we try a new project, there's that level of confidence and belief in ourselves. yes, but because it's something that we haven't really had a lot of experience in or haven't maybe even achieved any success in yet, you have that imposter syndrome. Are people going to listen to me? Are they going to buy it from me? Are they going to believe me? <laughs> you know, because we don't really necessarily believe in ourselves at that moment. Um, so that, that's, what, that's what I mean by imposter syndrome. Uh, okay, so making your mark in a valuable way. That's from Nick. Awesome. I love it. Uh, this, is, this is what success means to us. Being happy and let's see, being happy and, and proud of what you do. Thanks, Saren. Um, Toby, time, freedom, travels. Absolutely. Traveling. I love it. Uh, Tava. And I'm sorry if, I, if I'm saying anybody's name incorrectly. Doing the best I can here. <laughs> time to do what I want, uh, what, I, what I wish to do, not what I have to do. Yes. Yes. I think as hairstylists, too, this is something that we, a challenge that we have. It's like, well, we love doing hair. We don't think about retiring, at least until your body is like telling you, I can't do another day, right? I, I, I feel like, yes, this is a, one of those businesses that we are blessed to be able to do. We get to serve people. We get to make people's day every single day. However, wouldn't it be nice if you could do it because you want to, not because you have to, not because you got to put food on the table. If you had already created such a powerful business and you have your debts paid off and you have investments going and you're making money while you sleep in different ways. And there are ways to do that without having to, to come up with some um, like online program or something like, you know, with learning investment strategies and things like that, which we'll talk about in some of these coaching sessions as well, then you can let money work for you and make money work for you. And then you can really dive into your passion without having to worry about, I got to upcharge this person because my kids need new shoes or I just put them in, soccer and it's expensive or gosh my kids are getting to college and i know i'm talking about kids a lot i got, I got two little kids of my own and, and it's like that's they're constantly on my mind i want to make sure they're set up for when they're older uh and but maybe that's not maybe maybe you, you just want to be able to retire or, or or just take a client here and there because you love it but you don't want to have to worry about paying the mortgage paying the rent worry about that rainy day that might come you know you fall down, break a hip, break an arm, something where you're not able to work, but you want to make sure that you're still, you're still safe from those doctor bills because you have that financial backing. So I think that is, is very important for us to, to, to think about and to talk about because we want to be able to work because we want to, not because we have to, right? So I think that's a great point, great place to be for a lot of us. Um, let's see, we also have Tyler on here, safety, and freedom and comfort. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, let's see. We also have Kristen living life and being financially free. I love that. I love that. Uh, financially free too is one of those other. It's very personable, personal as well because financially free to some is like I never have to want to work another day in my life. Financially free to somebody else is I want to make sure that I'm I, I, the next six months I'm are paid. I'm fine. I'm ready for that rainy day, etc. So. It's very important, no matter what you consider success to be, that you start painting a picture of it. Get a journal, get something to start making notes with. Start clarifying what success looks like to you. Because otherwise, you're not going to know if you ever hit it. And then if you have what I've, I've been told that I have sometimes, it's called achievers paradox, <laughs> which means that like you're, you're constantly achieving things and, you, and you're, you're, your sights are always set on, okay, what's next? What's next? That by the time you accomplish a certain goal and a lot of achievers will accomplish goals quite a bit, but they won't ever take any time to celebrate them. That they're just like, okay, I did that. Boom. Check mark. It's like a to-do list. And what's next? What's next? What's next? You're not taking time to enjoy the journey. And I think a lot of us have to, to know what does success look like for us so that we know to, to appreciate it, accept it, feel fulfilled, and then move forward. There's nothing wrong with achieving, but we need to make sure that we're enjoying the journey along the way and knowing that, yes, I am successful because I am achieving this or I achieved this. And now I can move forward with that fulfillment in, in my, in my mind, in my, uh, in my, in my soul. Um, Let's see. What else? Knowing your worth. 
Great. And Tracy, this is a, I, I know this is a, a term we throw around a lot. Like what's your worst charge your worth. And um, I, I, I know what you mean. And I, and I know what we all mean by that, but let's, let's, let's rephrase that a little bit. Know your value. This is more important than knowing your worth because Tracy, what are you worth? You as a person, what are you worth? Priceless, right? You are priceless. You cannot be replaced. You are irreplaceable as a person. So, but if we, if we really charge our worth behind the chair, we would have zero clients because <laughs> nobody would be able to afford us. So what instead we need to know our value and that's the service that we provide. That is the value that we create with the atmosphere, with the experience that we are giving our clientele. So let's, let's, let's re rephrase that a little bit and then we can actually start to think about and put a, put a price tag on our value, right? Yeah, that's our value. Our value is the experience that we provide. It doesn't even matter. It's not even necessarily important that you give them the best hair cutter or hair color. If the experience is fantastic, you'll have clients no matter what. I mean, I, I, I can't, I would rather go to somebody that gives a slightly less than perfect haircut if, they, if they're an amazing person, the experience that they provide is second to none. If if, uh, you know, if I go there, they just know me, they want to get to know me as opposed to somebody that's absolutely perfect and they don't talk to you and they treat you like dirt. That's not, that's not value. I mean, it's, it might be a good haircut, but I'm not going to sit through that, that, that experience. So value is service, the experience that we provide from start to finish, from first contact to after leaving the salon. So let's rephrase it like that. I think that would be amazing. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. Exactly, Tracy. Priceless. You are priceless. You're irreplaceable. Okay. Um, now, as we talk about the five levels of success, and this is going to be a broad scope, but it's, it's, it's traditionally you'll find this in almost any business, any successful business. It, it also, it, what it's, it's a framework really for creating, for, for building a business, for growing a business and eventually scaling a business. Everybody needs this framework in place. And if, if you've taken uh, my growth accelerator, which is part of our, our, our um, it, it, it's like an either add on to the program or some of you have, 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 have purchased it individually as, um, as a, like a, a business boot camp, a six week business boot camp. Then, uh, then, then I talk about different frameworks. I talk about different levels that you have to climb to, to get, to be able to increase the value that you, that you, that you offer to your, your clientele. So I think it's important to know this different framework so that we're not jumping ahead. So a lot of us are starting our business or, or starting our, 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 our growth journey, say the down here at, at the bottom of a, a very long staircase, very tall staircase. And our goal is at the top of this staircase. What we try to do is we try to take a big step to get there as fast as possible. And although you can shortcut that process to get to the top, you can't skip any steps. There are ways to focus, to be, to be focused and structured as you climb your way to the top and it doesn't have to take forever. You can fast track it and there are ways to fast track it. And that's what this framework is all about. But you can't skip any steps because then you're going to have holes in your, in your foundation. It's kind of, it's like, you know, building a home is another great example without a foundation, without the right structures and, 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 um, and I don't I'm probably the bad example for me. I've never built a home or I'm very kind of poor. It, it was a poor in shop class, <laughs> but, but without the right support structure, without the right walls, without the roof, if you just go, if you just, if you dig a hole in the ground, put a couple of, of walls up without any, without any support structure, then you pop a roof on it. If you haven't taken the time to, to insulate it, put the wires in and do all this stuff along the way, then, then you're going to have a house that probably blows over with the first storm that comes. And it's going to be really cold because you're not going to have any insulation or it's going to be really hot because you don't have any windows. So it, it's, it's thinking about it like that. You can't skip any steps, but you can fast track those steps once you know what those steps are. Now let's get started here with this. So the five levels, and this is a proven system for, for modern success for, for any business needs this, whether you're a hairstylist, which I'm sure you are a salon owner, whether you, 
I have people in my coaching program that that uh, one of one of them one of my um, students wants to start a, a, a side hustle, a, a fitness group, which is so awesome. And a lot of our big dreams actually start with side hustles, and they become our full time job eventually. And then before you know it, you're might even be making more money from a side hustle than you are from your, your actual job. And then suddenly your whole life will open up new possibilities and doors. So very cool. Just um, throw up a, I don't know how you can't really do a hand, but does anybody here, is anybody working on a side hustle other than, other than hair or, or just, a, it could be hair or it, just other than being behind the chair every single day. I want to see it. Does anybody else have, have any other, um, side hustles going on. Maybe you, you might not have made any money doing it, but maybe another passion that you're actively pursuing thinking like, wow, it would be so cool if I made this a business. I'm just curious, throw it in the chat. I'll take a look at it. Um, let's see, uh, let's see, we got Tyler here. He says, I make hair products. Very cool. Very cool. That's awesome. That's definitely, um, a side gig and, and could quickly become, you could, you could reach a lot of people and uh, the more people you reach that are buying more consistently, uh, you could make a lot more money than even, even behind the chair. So that's very, very cool. Um, let's see, we've got Saran micro shading. I don't even know what that is. That sounds amazing. <laughs> what is micro shading? That's cool. Wonder Woman salon designer. I love it. Designing salons. Very, very cool. And then we got Mary who says, me, she's got a side hustle. That's awesome. I think it's important that we're always trying to think of what's next or how can we create another stream of income? What can we do to supplement ourselves? Because what if we can't do hair behind the chair anymore? Then what do we have to fall back on? This is how we have to start opening up our minds and expanding the possibilities out there. I think that's very, very cool. Um, we've got Mary also said financial services. So she said me and then financial services. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Tracy becoming a general contractor. Fantastic. I love that you are all starting to think a little bit outside the box. Like, okay, I'm a hairstylist. You probably love what you do, which is why you're joining this live, why you want to build, grow, or scale your business. Uh, and and uh, But you're still thinking like, okay, well, I love doing this. Maybe I love something else as much, or maybe I just want to open up another stream of income and serve people in a different way. So I think that's very, very cool. On a scale of one to five, five being like, yes, I'm all about it. One, I have no clue. How much vision do you have for where you want your life to be? So five is like, I know exactly where I want to go and I'm going there full steam ahead. One is like, I really have no idea. Put it in the chat right now. I'm very curious to see that right now. And there's no judgment here because we all start at one. <laughs> and if you're, if you're at one, Totally fine because there's 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 nowhere to go but up. You know, maybe you're just starting your journey and you've never had to think this way. Most people in life never take time to clarify their vision. Never know where they're going to go. They just get up and they go to work and they they that and that and it's just what they do. And then they they think about retiring or want to retire, but they haven't actually taken steps toward that to be to become retired or wonder what they're going to do when they're retired. Where I think a lot of us, the people that I've spoken to, they, they don't even want to retire. They just want to do something every single day that they love. And they, they want to be able to do it because they want to, not because they have to. They want that, that financial uh, independence, let's say. You know, more, of that, more of that financial freedom, but in a way that's like independent. You're not worried, worried about uh, paying the bills all the time. You know? So we've got... This is great. Five, three, five, 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 three, three, five, three, four, three, four, four, three, five, three, four. So a lot of middle of the rotors. It's cool that at least everybody seems to have taken some time to look into that. Well, that that's awesome because our first, uh, let's talk about the five levels here as we go into this first slide here. So pyramids are great. It's a great way to like look at it. Um, so from what are the five levels so from building a foundation to customizing your customer experience, the five level system builds a business that can grow, adapt and evolve regardless of what's happening in the world. That means recession proof. Now, of course, there's there's nothing that you can really 
say that's like 100% recession proof. There's always these one-off things, uh, the world destruction, blah, blah, blah. But there are certain steps you can take to put the put put it put the, the um, put success in your favor, right? And make decisions that will potentially live longer than you will. And that's what these five levels are about. Now, the level one, off the bottom here, that's why we're talking about vision. It's about vision. This is the foundation of everything. Going back to building a home, right? You dig a very strong foundation to support what you're going to put on top. But unless you know what you're going to put on top, you're not going to know how to dig the foundation. You're not just going to dig a hole and then decide, okay, now I know what I'm going to put on top of it. You already have that in mind because you've built the vision and then the foundation is what's going to support it all together because you know exactly where you're going. You're not going to just start building a home as you go. You know, you might maybe add some different paint when you get to the end, but you, you know where the bones of the house are going to be if you're starting from scratch. You know where the bathrooms are going to go, where the bedrooms are going to go, where the kitchen's going to go. You have to know these things so that you can wire it accordingly, so you can pipe it accordingly, put things where they need to be. And it starts with the foundation. It starts with the vision. You can see here by that little check mark, there are different ways to decide where you want to go. One of my favorite ways to do it is with a vision board. How many of you have done vision boards before? Have you seen uh, years and years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, you've heard of uh, The Secret, the book, the movie talks about like you're, you're basically putting energy out into the world. And then energy comes from from like your mind, from from your, 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 your soul, and you're using, you're putting it out into the, the message out into the universe, and you're using the universal energy. You know, you gotta, you gotta really, if you're a visionary and you want big things for your life, you have to kind of every now and then be a little woohoo, <laughs> if that means. You gotta, you gotta trust that there's something more out there, that there's something working for you, even if it's not like, even if you don't necessarily believe in God or the universe, it's like, you probably believe that there's something, that there's some energy around. I think energy is something that we, we can't deny. So uh, you put energy out into the world, you get energy back. If you put positive energy out into the world, a lot of times you get positive energy back. You put negative energy out into the world, you're going to get negative energy back. I, I think a lot of us can relate to that. So this is very similar with a vision board. The vision board is really thinking about what you want in the future. What really like gets your gets you going in a really positive way. Is it a fancy car? They, a lot of times it's materialistic and that's totally fine. You don't have to share your vision board with people. This can be for you and your own satisfaction. Get, uh, I, I, what I use these days is Canva. Canva is fantastic. I'm gonna try, I have a heater on right here. It's starting to melt my leg. Okay, so heater in San Diego. I know, I know, it's still cold in here. But, um, okay, so a vision board, is, is I would I would get the, the Canva you know online. I don't know if you have a, a membership to it or not. I think you can start with even a free or very low cost membership. It's like that graphic art program. It's like Photoshop for dummies, which is, I mean, you have to be really smart to understand Photoshop and, <laughs> and Photoshop's intense. Canva is is the is the answer. So go to Canva, get one of those free accounts or, or low cost accounts. Uh, you probably have one. Borrow with friends like you would your Netflix account, and then you get like a. Um, a collage, you know, like a template collage of maybe, I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 15 photos. And then I would just search through sites like unsplash.com, which are royalty-free sites, a site that where you can pull pictures without having to worry about somebody saying, hey, that's my picture, take it down. Of course, of course nobody's going to see what we're putting on there anyway. But you can screenshot from Google, whatever it is. If there's a car that you're like, oh my gosh, my life would be amazing if I could drive this car or I want to take this particular beach vacation, or I want to even, I want to marry somebody that looks like this, you know, this is, this is just for you. Okay. Uh, what else? If you want to like ever fly in a private plane, whatever gets you super juiced and excited, put it on the collage. And you know what you're going to do once that collage is filled. I mean, I had pictures of like places I want to travel, a uh, house I wanted to live in. Um, uh, what else? There was a private plan on there too. I'm still working on that. But there was like, you know, I wanted uh, writing a book, um, a certain guitar I wanted to play, all, all these different, different things that would just like, I would look at it and be like, yes, that's where I want to go. And it gets you really excited and juiced. 
That's what vision boards are all about. You make that and you put it right in front of you so you see it every day. It doesn't have to be, again, it could be in your closet or something, but as long as you take a look at it every single day, take a beat, think about it, look at those pictures that get you really excited. That will start to fuel you and you're putting that energy out into the universe. I guarantee you, before you know it, a year later, two years later, three years later, and you're gonna, in the meantime, every year, I would do a different vision board. I'd like a new one. So you're kind of like re-clarifying your focus, re-energizing re yourself and your path. You will start to look back on that and be like, oh my gosh, that came true. I swear it has happened to me. I will look on that and be like, that has happened. That happened to me. I you know, own a house now on this, or I went to that place. I went to that island. I took this trip. I, you know, I, I drive that car now. I, it, it's, 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 it just, it, it, it's so cool. It's magic. It really is. And it also helps really clarify where we want to go. It's okay if some of your wants are materialistic. I mean, there's it, something nice about driving a really nice car. Uh, or, or you could even take a screenshot of what your bank account might look like, you know, if financial independence is something that you want. Be creative with this. You guys are creatives. You're artists. So have fun with this. It's, it's a great way to spend your time. It's a great way to get focused on where you want to go. And it's a great way to start painting a vision uh, as well. I see um, on here in the chat. Has anybody here ever done a vision board? I want I want to hear about that. Um, will this be live or on replay somewhere? I'm in and out listening to the live. Absolutely. We'll we'll put it in your members library as well, and we'll um, uh, also send an email. I think we sent an email with a replay link as well. But it's in a mob mob live mob coaching folder inside your your members library. We just made vision boards with a stylist at the salon. Brittany, way to go! I love that. Probably got everybody super excited about it. Um, oh, yeah. Rakesha, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Yes, you in the vision boards. Awesome. Wonder Woman, yes, it totally works. I'm telling you. If you want to learn more about vision boards too, go uh, get The Secret. It's um, by, what's it? Burn, something Burn, B-Y-R-N-E. Um it's an amazing book. It's an ama There's a movie too that talks about the energy and, and the power of vision boards and, and the ahas that people have with those. Very, very cool. Uh, it, this is a great way to, to, for us artists to really connect with where we want to go. Um, and, and going back to level one here, we're only at level one, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll cruise through this pretty quickly here because this is just a framework and we can dive into this further in the future. If you guys like this particular coaching episode, I definitely want to make sure that the coaching helps you and it is something that you actually want to learn and dive deeper into. Um, throw it in the chat there. You guys enjoying this so far? Are you enjoying learning about how to, how to build, grow, and scale your business? Um, so now on this vision stage here, you can see uh, the visualization is a huge part of it. What we want to determine in the vision stage is where we want to go. That's going to be done with vision boards. That's going to be done with, there's another way to do it too. And some of us might not know where we want to go. We might be like, people say like, hey, what do you want? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> but, but you know what? I bet you know what you don't want. So this is one of the most valuable exercises you will ever do. If you don't really know what you want, make a list of every single thing you don't want. Fill up an entire page with everything that you don't want in your life in the future. And you know what? At the end of that, go through that. And you'll probably be like, all right, I know what I do want now. <laughs> I have a much better picture, a much better, clearer idea. That'll be one of the most valuable exercises you ever, ever do. Moving on to level two, business. Once we have our vision, our foundation, we're in the business level. This is where we're going to be establishing your ideal business in relation to your vision, in relation to your current resources. What I, what I mean by all that, the resources you have is you, a lot of times it comes down to, to leverage, which means like, how, where, where can I pull, where can I, where can I um, pull help from? Leverage comes from financial. Do you have money that you can put into a business or are you starting on a shoestring budget? A lot of us, when we're starting a side hustle, starting a business in general, we either maybe have a loan or we have very little money from what we're making already that we already have to pay bills. We already, already have to pay for our living expenses. And if we have families, we have to support them as well. So it might just be pennies on the dollar for a while. So we have to know where we're starting and the resources that we can pull. Do we have friends that might have connections to help us save money, to help us shortcut 
that path to, to starting a business. And then you have to think about what kind of a business do you want to have? What kind of a team do you want to have? Do you want to, is it even in the, if it's a, are you want to open a salon? Do you want to be a booth renter? Are you, are you a student? And you're just like, I don't know what I want to do, but I, I want to have my own salon business. You need to start taking, you can't just jump into it. That's what I'm saying. You need to uh, uh, take time to think about, is it going to be an online business? Is it going to be a brick and mortar business? Is it going to be something you can actually physically walk into? Do, am I going to need a, an assistant? Am I going to need a bookkeeper? Am I going to need an accountant? Or am I going to, can I afford any of that yet? What are my resources like? A lot of times we have to do it all ourselves at first. And I would honestly tell you that's the best way to get started. Yes, it's exhausting. You have to work a lot more at first to get to where you want it to be, where you have more flexibility, where you can hire the right people. But it's better than making the mistake of hiring people too quickly without knowing what it takes to do that job well. Because if you don't know what it takes to do that job well, you're not going to know if they're doing a good job. If you hire an assistant before you even need an assistant, you don't even maybe even have a, a need for them yet. You're going to make them do things that you haven't figured out yourself yet. You need to figure out most of your business before you hire out for it. You need to learn your taxes. You need to learn what kind of a, a legal entity you need to s s start it out. Is it going to be, um, are you going to be a sole proprietor? Are you working already at, for somebody else in a commission? Are you a 1099? How are you going to be paying taxes? You need to figure all this stuff out first before you can, uh, you, can go to, you can go to an accountant. I think we should all, no matter what level, get an accountant. Just don't use QuickBooks. QuickBooks is great for your, your accountant and bookkeeper to actually go through when you get to that point. But QuickBooks, even if you're just starting out, there are so many ways that we can save on as uh, taxes that we don't know ourselves that QuickBooks isn't going to give us those answers for. So as far as like taxes are concerned and we're moving into tax season now, go get an accountant. They're absolutely worth it. Even if you're not going to get money back, they'll help you from paying more than you should. Um, uh, going back to the business. And so then we're, we're defining that kind of business that we want. Um, there's a great book that I would recommend you all get. No matter what type of business you're in, whether you're a commission stylist, salon owner, booth renter, um, starting a side gig and you want information on that, it's called The E-Myth Revisited. It's about the entrepreneurial myth. It's about what it takes to be successful as an entrepreneur. In reality, we're all entrepreneurs. We're business owners. We're trying to create something bigger than ourselves, or at least we're trying to create a, a business that that can survive on its own without us maybe having to show up all the time. Wouldn't that be nice if we didn't have to go to work, but know that we're still getting paid in some way, whether it is from our business or maybe we're selling retail or we have somebody working when we're not there. So we're, we constantly have that influx of money, that, that, that stream of income generation, or whether we have investments set up so that when we're not at work, we're still gaining interest on something. And I'm not talking about savings accounts, because savings accounts, they don't give you a lot of money. I, I did notice there's one, it's called Wealthfront. It, you, it's like, the, it, I see ads all over for it. I've seen people talking about it. I, I, they're not, they don't pay me any money to talk about it, but it's like you can get 4% back on sa saving your money there. Typical savings account is like less than 1%. So even if you have $100,000 in the bank, you're not making any, barely any money. <laughs> so it's like, What's the point? You make it a dollar or you know ten dollars for every hundred thousand dollars. So it's like it's not worth just putting into a savings account. You need to make your money work for you. But decide what kind of, decide what kind of business you want to have and where you want to take your business. If you already have a business, then maybe it's time to think about how can I clarify it even more so I can focus on what's working, what's not, what holes do I need to patch up or fill. If if you've been in business for a while and still don't have a bookkeeper or or an accountant you can trust trust then uh, now's the time to really think about doing that because yes you'll have to pay money for those types of people but it's worth it because they're going to save you money in the long term they're going to help you with business write offs they're going to help you in different tax brackets you hear about how the rich don't pay a lot in in taxes i mean you still have to pay quite a bit but you learn different ways to to not pay as much as it, uh, by being informed as opposed to being in, um, uninformed, if that makes sense. Um, okay, the name of that book, I, I, I think 
uh, question here. The name of the book was The E-Myth Revisited. Um, it was, let me just, I'll type it in the chat here, E-Myth. It talks about all the different hats that entrepreneurs need to wear to be successful. Where you need like a visionary, you need um, uh, a manager, you need a technician. These are all different kinds of our brain that we need to, to do too. The problem is most of us are trying to be the, the visionary and the technician. We're trying to plan where we want to go and we're doing the work behind the chair, but we're not actually taking time to manage the business around it. So it's like you can't at first, yes, you got to do everything, but it's like you can't really be focused specifically on on in the business and on the business at the same time where it would be great if you had somebody in each of those different roles or you make time as a, as a sole entrepreneur to focus on each of those different roles at any given time so that you're completely focused on like, okay, I'm focusing on vision right now for the company. And then one day you're okay. Today I'm focusing on the business. I'm making sure everything's set up on the back end. And then other days or throughout the day, you are that technician. Um, okay, so that is the second level. Third level, this is what most stylists have the most fun with, is the branding. This is your promise to your customer telling them what they can, what they can expect from your product or services. So this, yeah, our, this is the, the colors. <laughs> this, is, this is the message that you send. This is the social media uh, facing part of your company. This is the, the way your emails look when you send them out. Problem is a lot of stylists, a lot of not just stylists because we're creative, but a lot of people in business, they skip the vision part. They think very little about the business that they want to have and they jump straight into the branding. I'm just going to build a website and see what happens, you know, before you actually decide, before I do the branding, I need to think about wh where, what, what kind of business am I even going to have here? How specific is it going to be? It needs to be specific. Why am I doing this? You need the foundation before you can supply the branding. Now, one thing you're going to learn here too, if you, if you are somebody that already has been in business for a while, which I'm sure some of you have, then you're probably, you, you might have some great branding, but you, you might not have that vision or even business structure quite in place yet. It's okay if you jumped ahead, but now this is about patching up the holes. Now it's about strengthening that foundation and you know what it's going to do? It's also going to help you get clearer and clearer on your branding as you go. One thing we have to think about as entrepreneurs, as business pros, as hairstylists, it is not about us. The experience we provide is all about them. It's all about the people that we serve. You are a service provider. That means you give service. Everything you do, you start you need to start removing the I. I do this. I did that. I blah, 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 blah. I, 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 I. Stop talking about yourself. Nobody cares <laughs> except for you. What we need to do to be successful is we need to focus on who are we helping? How is what we are providing helping others? And the, the, the thing is, the more people we help get what they want, the more we'll be able to get what we want. And, and it's, it's very, it's, it's like a win-win. It's, it's self-serving in that regard. But most of us start with ego leading the way. Like, well, you should come to me because I'm the best balayage artist. And I have this many followers and I have this, I give you tea and coffee and champagne and mimosas and I give you chocolate at the end. It's I, 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 I. We need to remove that. How do you make them feel? What is in it for them? Reframe ourselves like that way. What They're coming in because they have a problem. And the problem is, I, it might not necessarily be a problem, but they want to get, maybe the problem is they, their roots are coming out. It's not like a huge problem. Well, we all know for some it is, you know. The grays are coming back. I have a wedding on Thursday. I need to get fixed now. What can you do? Well, you don't want to say like, well, I can do this. I can do that. It's talking about like, well, this is what we're going to do for you because this will make your hair magically beautiful for this. And talk about what, what's in it for them. Talk about the results that they're going to get and how they're going to feel from being from the service that you're providing. That's how we need to restructure everything that we're doing with, with our businesses. And the more we start to focus on them, the less pressure we take off ourselves as well. Level four is marketing. Marketing is a fancy way of saying selling. It's promoting and selling services and products 
through content creation and advertising through sales channels that best reach your target audience. Now, who is your target audience? This is where you really even start to define that. You might have already started to do that in your business. If, if you hear me talk about finding a niche, because niche, the, the riches are in the niches, where I used to always, I used to be a blonde specialist and of course have an education company. I, I helped most of my blondes with a mixture of foils and balayage. And of course that, that opened up the doors to masters of balayage and education around that. So I had a niche when I was creating my business, but it came with the branding and then, and then the marketing became more clear with that. So I kind of knew where I was going with the business and then I could position my branding in a certain way to, to, to move toward what we call the ideal client, which would be somebody that wants balayage, somebody that wants, somebody that wants this beautiful lived in result. And, and that's who we would, do, uh, would, would aim for in our marketing. We don't want somebody that doesn't want balayage. You know, we don't want necessarily, we're not trying to attract great touch up clients only. We're not uh, trying to find people that want haircuts only. I mean, some of those are byproducts. Once they get in your chair for balayage, then you can do the great touch ups and you can give them a haircut. That's all great. But marketing is where you get really specific on who you're selling to and how you are going to reach them. Where is your ideal client? For a lot of us, we use Instagram because it's a great visual tool to attract our ideal clientele. But not all of us, all of us take great photos uh, yet, or, or maybe it, it, we need practice on that. So our, our feeds aren't necessarily attracting clients into our chair. So let's find out other ways where our ideal clients might be. Most of our clients are not on Instagram, you know, especially if you're in a local salon somewhere and most of us work in localized areas. If, somebody from, from Maryland is not going to come to San Diego necessarily. <laughs> Probably not. You know, chances are, or, or the majority of my clientele, no matter how famous I am, will, will, will travel that far when there's probably somebody as good or better around the corner, right? Where they can just like go in the afternoon, pick up their kids and come home, right? And get their hair done. So we need to think about other ways to market ourselves. And this could be what I teach to is like the expert approach is by having the niche whether you're a, a redhead specialist, whether you're a blonde specialist, balayage specialist, curly hair specialist, whatever you love to do, I'm sure you're very good at doing it because you love it and you put a lot of time and effort into it. That might be your specialty. Doesn't mean you're not going to attract other types of clients, but the clearer we can get on who we're trying to service, like if we could have the perfect client in our chair all day long, what would that look like? Would it be something new every time? That sounds pretty stressful to me. Or would it be like, balayage, 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 or haircut, 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 you know, and maybe some color on that person or, or, or some balayage on that person, not on the same person, but it's the same kind of client. They're coming to you for a reason because you're a specialist and specialists can charge more. So the more specific your branding and your marketing is, the more you can charge for your services. And we're going back to the value. The more clear you are on all of these levels, the more your value is going to go up because the experience that you are providing is clear. The person that you're attracting knows what they're gonna get. Your value for, the, for the, what you're charging is, is, continues to rise and rise and rise. They're also getting a very consistent feel from start to finish. They don't go to your website and you talk about like, hey, I'm a stylist, I do everything. And then they go to your Instagram page because people do research. And your Instagram page says, I am a curly haired specialist but it didn't say that on your website. And then they go to like, if you have a LinkedIn or a Facebook and it says like, hey, I'm a fitness coach. <laughs> it doesn't say anything about hair. Suddenly, are, are you going to believe that person that they're going to be able to solve your hair needs no matter what you're going for? If you, if you go, because you, you're looking for a curly haired specialist, but then you, it says fitness expert over here, nothing about hair on Facebook. And then there's just no congruency between the social media challenges, the uh, uh, channels then, then, it's, then it's, it's, it's gonna be hard to trust that person. So it's got, you gotta have that congruence. You gotta have that, that, that um, consistency throughout. Tava here says, what does ICA mean? ICA means ideal client. It's it, more fancier ideal client avatar. That's what a lot of marketers talk about. Avatar is kind of like, you know, the little face that we choose to represent ourselves when we send text messages. You know, it's usually like an animated cartoon face, but what it is, it's we're painting a picture of the type of person 
we want to capture. Doesn't necessarily have to be specific enough to say like, I'm looking for somebody between the ages of 25 to 35 that has brown hair. And it doesn't have to be quite that specific. It can be anybody that wants professional balayage, a lived in look, you know, that, that has a certain kind of hair. You know, it doesn't have to be, it has to be specific enough to maybe a niche, but you don't have to necessarily be age specific or they need to make a certain amount of money to do this. I mean, maybe if you're selling different types of courses, but we, but we all know from experience that people will pay a lot of money for hair, whether they have no money in the bank or whether they have lots of money in the bank, they still want good hair. So some people will make exceptions in different categories. So I think it's foolish for us to try to pinpoint a particular type of, of affluence, if, if that makes sense, or, or uh, wealth. Because we're all like, well, we got, want to find the wealthiest clients. Some of the wealthiest clients are the cheapest clients around, and you don't want them in your chair. I'll, I'll, I'll say that right now. I've had them, and I thought that was like my ideal client, and it's really not. You know, maybe young professionals that that have a nice paycheck that want to look good for happy hours and 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 spouses and partners and dates and things like that. And yeah, that's that was kind of like my my client. Um, this we talk about the uh, copywriting. Copywriting is in the marketing too. Copywriting is also kind of another fancy way to talk about how you write your emails. What is the tone of your emails? Are you friendly? Are you corporate? Are you professional? Do you use emojis? Like again, it's got to have a consistent feel. There's something really, really cool that I got to tell you about, which you've probably heard about. You, this emergence of AI, artificial intelligence, and it's really creepy cool. There is this program, you've probably heard of it um, or, or heard people talk about it. It's called Chat GP, GPT, CPT. Where is it? Where is it? I'm looking it up right now. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. If you go to chat, I'll, I'll type it in here because it's just so cool. Chat GPT. It's a free platform, probably won't be free for very long, but it's, it's artificial intelligent software. You have to sign up for an account, promise not to like ask for anything too weird. But if you tell it to write you something, it will. If you say, hey, write me a screenplay about aliens, it will write you a screenplay about aliens. It won't be like a you know 40 page screenplay. But if you wanted to say like, write me a thank you letter to my clients for being loyal. And it will, it, will, it will generate that for you. And it'll be like something you probably couldn't have written as well yourself. You know, it, it would take you, it would take me months to write some of the things that they, that spits out in about 10 seconds. So it's very, very cool. So if you're like writing newsletters and things like that, I'll admit when I send out newsletters, I'm, I'm utilizing that more where if I want to say like, hey, give me 10 tips to be healthier this year. And it'll, be, and it'll give you like bullet points, one, two, three, four to 10 and then, of course, I can look at that and be like, okay, now let me just tweak a few words here, personalize a little bit more. But it gives a framework that is not copywritten. It's absolutely generated from art artificial intelligence. And you can use it. And it'll help to put, put copy on, put, put words on your website, put words. It'll help you even create, like, give me a catchy bio for my Instagram post about dogs. <laughs> something like that. It is wild. I did something that was really crazy too, just to, just to kind of test it. I said, write a dating bio to attract um, uh, a female that likes hikes. <laughs> just, you can be specific like that. And it will create something that is so real that it's going to be hard to know who to trust anymore. But like, that's how somebody could use it uh, in, a, in probably a negative way. Or if somebody's just really bad at writing, you could write something to kind of like talk yourself up, but then make it your own. That's what I always say. You know, it's kind of like what they say, like steal like a pro. It's like you, 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 you don't have to re recreate the wheel with everything you do. See what other people are doing. You model them. Tony Robbins talks about it all the time. Model what other successful people are doing and make it your own. And that's how you learn. That's how you grow. And that's how you can scale a business. Okay. And the last, does anybody know what the last level five might be? Anybody, anybody, anybody. I'll give you a second here to just throw some ideas. What do you think level five is of the five levels of, of modern success here? Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a delay. So I'm going to give you a second here. 
Should I add some of that? That's Jeopardy, right? Jeopardy, I think. Is nobody going to guess? Is nobody going to guess or is there just a, a lag here? Okay, well, I'll probably pop this over here and then I'll probably get a bunch. Oh, here we go. Execute. That's a good one, Deanne. Execute's a good one. Talent. Talent is a good one. Good to go, Tamara. Apply. Apply. Fantastic. I'm sure that's another like take action, execute. Create, creating, Tracy. Love it, love it, love it. These are all great. These are all great. One thing to keep in mind, you should be at every single step of the way. What we're doing is we're taking a rapid fire approach. We're taking action along the way. So every single one of these, we're not just, we're, we're not making sure all these are done first. We want to make sure that we are, we are moving along the way. We're taking action every step of the way. We're executing every step of the way. So instead of being at the top of the pyramid, you don't want to, that, that's what we call the ready aim fire approach. You know, like if you're, uh, you know, if you're a marksman and you're, you're trying to get the perfect shot and you're like, ready, aim, 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 fire, right? And then you hope it hits the, the center. That's what a lot of entrepreneurs do, um, unsuccessful entrepreneurs do. Because you know what they do? They never fire. They're waiting. They have that analysis paralysis. They're paralyzed from inaction. They're waiting for it to be perfect. And is it ever perfect? It's never perfect. There's perfection is a myth. Perfection is a trap. If we wait till it's perfect, by the time we reach that perfection, we'll have already reached a new idea of perfection in our minds. We never can actually attain perfection. The only, only, the only thing I can think of that you can get perfect on is, is in a, is on a test. You know, you can get every question right, you know? Um, but as far as in the, in the business scheme and what we do here with business, we want to do the ready fire aim approach. So what we want to do is we want to get ready. We want to create our vision and boom, just start going. Create that website. Learn as you go. We want to just like taking spaghetti, start throwing it at the wall, see what sticks. And whatever sticks, we focus on that. That's kind of like when we have our why. We know why we want to be successful. We have that foundation and we've painted an idea of our vision. We know where we want to go, but we're not sure how we're going to get there. The how is the part where we're just like, let's try everything. Let's try YouTube. Let's try social media. Let's try going on to, this, uh, uh, to, to clubs. Let's try to go into to, um, food stores and tap people on the shoulders, business cards. Let's try calling old clients and asking for referrals. Let's try everything because we don't know what's going to work to help us achieve our goals, to get us to where we want to go, to get us to that idea that we have painted about our vision in our head. So level five here. It's customer experience. You can have the best vision, the best business, the best branding, the best marketing on the planet. But if you do all this and you attract your ideal customer into your chair and you don't give them any customer experience, you have a chair set up in a back alley with a mirror popped against a dumpster. Is that a great customer experience? Maybe you're mean, you're not like your brand. If, if you're, if you're marketing copy in your, in your, your AI generated words, get enticing people and your captions, getting them into your chair are all happy. Go luck. Hey, I'm so excited to have you in my chair. Oh my gosh. You're amazing. If you're, if you have emojis everywhere and you're super happy and, 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 and positive, and then they come and they meet you. You're just like, Ryan, sit down. Let's do this. Okay. All right. And you just, and you're just completely, it's not congruent. It doesn't match with the experience that they had to get to the actual customer experience, it's, it's going to be a fail. Now, just like other, uh, if we were going to start, I think, I think most business owners will start with what? Well, they'll start with the branding and then they'll go with the customer experience and then they'll try to create a, a business around that. They'll have an idea like, I want to be a hairstylist, but let me, let me, what's my name going to be? What, what are my colors going to look like? Let me, let me make sure that my salon suite looks perfect. And then when they come in, I'm going to offer them tea and make sure the customer experience is great. But you haven't really taken time to nail down who your ideal client is. You're going to have all kinds of people coming and going, coming and going. Some will stay, some will leave. Your business will fluctuate. You'll have slow months, you'll have busy months. You won't have any vision about 
really why you want to create a business, where you want to take your business, what your goals are. So you're constantly scraping month to month, bill to bill. You haven't set up anything legal in your business. So tax time comes around. You, you're, you're paying so much more in taxes if you have your own business. I mean, if you work for somebody, then it's automatic, like a W-2. But it's, these are, you have to have all these elements in place. There's no shortcutting us. We can't go from vision all the way to customer experience. We can't skip marketing, branding, and business, or we won't have a business. We can't go from business to branding to customer experience because our branding, without the right marketing, without the right copy, without the right focus on who we're trying to get in our chair, we won't have people in our chair. And what do a lot of stylists, what's, our, what's a lot of the biggest challenge? Consistency. We, we work as much as we can when we have clients and then we have slow days. We have gaps in our day. We have gaps in our week. We end up working on Sundays and Mondays. We work sometimes early, sometimes later than our shifts. We take clients at home to try to make more money off the books, right? Then when the holidays roll around, we're like, okay, this is my time. This is when stylists are supposed to work their tail off because January sucks. February is a little better. March starts to pick up again. And then summer comes around and it's a little bit slower. And you have these ebbs and flows. Well, if you take time to use this framework, to go through all these levels, to make it regular practice, to get clearer and clearer on all these different levels, no matter how many levels you already have been working on, you need to be refining all of these levels. The more you do that, the clearer you get, the more focused you get, you'll never have any slow days anymore. You won't have any slow months anymore. You won't have to work your tail off during November and December. You won't have to because January is going to be just as busy. February is going to be just as busy. You can work three to four days a week, make over six figures, start to build financial independence, not be stressed out, have the right clients in your chair, be able to take vacations when you want to take vacations, be able to stay home for a week during Christmas, maybe a week after Christmas, whatever you want to do. You can do that because you are designing a business around what you want because you have painted that picture. And I want you all to really think about this as you, as you move forward. The clearer you get on this, the happier you're going to be, the more you're going to be fulfilled in where you want to go, and the more fun you're going to have. You're going to be able to have more fun showing up every single day. It's not going to be a job anymore. It's going to be a freedom to be able to go to work, to hang out with people that you love in your chair without having to deal with the ones like, oh, I have another new client, without having that like, open door of like, I don't know what to expect today because new clients are great, but it's also like first dating where you don't know what you're going to get. It's a box of chocolates. <laughs> so I, I hope you really enjoyed all this today. That's the end of our coaching uh, today. If anybody is interested in doing some personal coaching with me, I do have a, a couple of slots that just opened. Um, and, and we do do that. Uh, you can reach out to Ryan at masters of balayage.com. I only take five clients at a time. Uh, it, it, it is, it's, it's one-on-one -on -one with you to, to help take you to that next level, to shortcut your path to success with customized strategies just for you. Typically they're based in like 12, 12, uh, week segments. It was like three, three months of hard focused work and then send you off, you know, but your course, you're making progress on the way. If that's something that anybody would be interested, reach out to me, uh, no pressure at all. But, um, Thank you all for, for showing up today. It's a big, uh, I'm going to give you a big pat on the back for doing that. You take your education seriously and you deserve great things because of that. You have everything you need to be successful in this life, whether you're starting from zero or whether you have tons of resources, you can do it. All right. We're all different levels, but anything is possible. And just, I want you to believe in yourself because you are capable, as I say at, at my my daughter's school. You are strong. You are brave. You can do this. I've spoken to many hairstylists. Some of you are, uh, have, have some, you know, uh, challenges. Challenges being a lot of times with confidence. Confidence a lot of times comes from that, that feeling that we're not good enough because we're hairstylists, because we don't have a college education. But you know what? Hairstylists have just as much of a right to exceed expectations and succeed. And no matter who's in your chair, Nobody's better than you. You are an incredible person and you are deserving 
of a, of a loving, fantastic, fulfilling life. So on that note, I want to say thank you again for showing up and we'll see you soon.